All right, going back to what we started talking about yesterday with normal distribution. Okay, we, we're going to start talking about the idea of normal. What is normal? Okay, everybody's normal is a little bit different. We talked about yesterday uh, normal blood pressure, uh, normal heart rates, uh, everything, uh, everybody has their own normals. Okay, so when you have a blood pressure of normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. If you have one uh, blood pressure of 110 over 70, it doesn't mean, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. Okay, I'm below normal. Okay, that's just a typical normal healthy blood pressure that they use to be able to gauge. So when you talk about blood pressures, whenever you go to the doctor and they put that little cup around your arm and they pump it up a little bit or they hit the button and, they, and it squeezes and gives your arm a hug, Okay, and they measure your blood pressure, they come up with two numbers. Normal blood pressure, as we talked about yesterday, was 120 over 80. Okay, and that's your suggested normal blood pressure right here. But you have all types of different things in regards to your blood pressure. If you have higher numbers or if you have lower numbers, if you have a problem or you have higher numbers, you tend to have problems. If you have lower numbers, uh, hopefully you're not going to have much difficulty unless you're a little bit older and you have a low breath, blood pressure, they'll start. Uh, seeing to make sure everything is okay. <clears throat> but when you get to this point right here, if you're if you're athletic, if you do a lot of that, if you're very active in, in everything that you do, you're going to be down here in the 110s, the 100s, over 70, 75, or 65. You're going to be down there, which is fine. If you don't get worked up, you don't get stressed out about many things at all, you're going to have a lower blood pressure. If you get anxious up about things and you start worrying about things, Going to a doctor tends to raise a blood pressure because you're you get a little anxious about going to see a doctor. So you have a higher blood pressure. So you have to watch yourself. When you go to the doctor, you just relax yourself and you, you get your blood pressure taken and, and it will be okay. Uh, but they have different uh, avenues in regards to what they could do with respect to treating blood or high blood pressures. Um, here's some ideas in regards to uh, lowering your blood pressure, what you can do to that over here, uh, foods that you can get rid of, these are good foods over here. So there's a, here's a chart here that basically tells you what you should be doing in regards to your blood pressure, how you keep, how you keep yourself healthy. Well, once again, this is our normal 120 over 80, but suggested optimal, optimal, but once again, you have all these things down here that you're okay. And even up here, when you're a little bit high normal, you're still okay. Still okay, you don't have to worry about it as much. Well, with respect to statistics, we could talk about normal distribution. What is a normal distribution? And from this point on, from this point on, we will be talking about a normal distribution. If you get into stats too, if you get into the next level of statistics, we'll start dealing with distributions that aren't quite normal. But we have some histograms here. And when we deal with these histograms, we've talked about this a little bit. This is a normal distribution here. This is a normal distribution here, where what we have is we have, it's symmetric in regards to both sides. We have symmetry here and our highest level of frequency is right in the middle, and we tear it off to the side. Okay, the next two here, talked about before, this is a skew. This is skewed left, and this is skewed right. What you take a look at is you take a look at a tail. Well, this is a frequent, these are frequency diagrams in your histograms. Okay, using your histograms and your frequency in your <coughs> frequency table, we get these histograms here. What we start moving into is basically the shape of the curve here. Okay. When you have a normal distribution, okay, we can look at this in regards to the frequency diagram, if I had a point at the top, 
of each one of these, and I would connect the point at the top of each one of these. What we get is we get what is called a bell shaped curve. A bell shaped curve. It is a normal distribution curve. And we talked about previously, when you talk about a bell shaped curve or a normal dis distribution curve, teachers will sometimes grade on a curve. But when they grade on the curve, what they're looking at is a bell shaped curve where they want C's being the majority of the grades in between. And we have a lower frequency of B's and D's, and even a lower frequency of A's and failing grades. This is our frequency of each one of these. So they grade on a curve, so they space it out where the bulk of the scores are going to be C's. And that's where our higher frequencies are. When you're talking about a normal distribution, our mean, median, mode, theoretically, is right here in the middle. Okay, this is your mean, this is your median, and this is your mode right here in the middle. When we start talking about skewedness, the mean, median, and mode start to change to different areas. Our mode is where we have the most at, and our mean and our median tend to veer, and they're close to each other, tend to veer towards this side over here. They'll veer towards this over here. And likewise, when I have skewness to the right, we have our mode that is here, and our mean and our median <coughs> will fall here. And these will be fairly close to each other, the mean and the mean. And they'll just vary just a little bit. But the mode will be at the peak. When we talk about a normal distribution curve, A normal distribution curve is a bell-shaped curve named the Gaussian distribution curve, named after Carl Gauss. It was a German mathematician who derived the equation of the graph. Carl Gauss was a very, very intelligent mathematician, but he also ventured into the scientific world. Carl Gauss was born in 1777, died in 1855. He's a German physicist, mathematician, and astronomer. Okay, is ranked with Archimedes and Newton, Sir Finnick of Isaac Newton, as one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. Gauss began making important discoveries. Okay, think about this. Gauss started making important discoveries when he was just 17 years old. 17. Where are you guys at? Come on! Step up your game a little bit. For his doctoral thesis, he submitted the first rigorous proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Fascinated by numbers theory, Gauss once stated mathematics is the queen of the sciences and the theory of numbers is the queen of mathematics. His work in this area considered to be the beginning of modern number theory. In probability theory, Gauss developed, again, yeah, this is probability theory, Gauss developed the method of least squares and fundamental laws of probability distribution. Unfortunately, Gauss was reluctant to publish any of his findings without complete proof. So many of his discoveries were not credited to him, including uh, his innovative work developing a non-Euclidean geometry. 
Goss was the last of the great scholars whose interest spanned virtually every branch of mathematics since his time. The branches have expanded so greatly that students of mathematics generally choose and specialize in a particular area. 17 years old. Come on! You can do better! 17 years old. Can you believe that? But when you venture down into our geometry class down here, Ms. Fennell, or Dr. Clark down here, when you were in his geometry class, that was called Euclid's geometry. And Euclid's geometry, everything is aligned. What's going on up there? Huh? Okay, everything is aligned in Euclid's geometry. Okay, but when we say everything is a line, is it really a line? Is the equator a line? Yeah. If you're Kyrie Irving, yes, it is a line. Because the Earth is flat. But I think the last time I checked, the Earth was round, which means the equator goes around the Earth, which means the equator, even so we say it's a line, it is really a circle. Everything is curved. Everything is curved. That's the belief in non-Euclid's geometry. But he did, did some ideas with respect to uh, normal distribution. Okay, as everything in statistics, it starts out with some very basic ideas. <clears throat> when we talk about a normal distribution, it's a continuous, it is continuous, it is symmetric, bell-shaped distribution of a variable. would give you an extra set, but our recycling people are very, very efficient <laughs> on Thursdays, and they make sure our recycles got. So I can't help you there, Chief. Properties of a normal distribution. Normal distribution is a bell-shaped curve. You have a bell-shaped curve. The mean, mean, and mud are in the middle. You have a peak. It tails off on both sides. It's like the pilgrim tax. <laughs> and you're going to be responsible for giving me a couple of these characteristics. The mean, median, mode are equal and located at the center of the distribution. I will post these in the internet print them all if you want. The mean, median, mode are equal and located at the center of the distribution. The distribution curve is a unimodal, which means you only have one mode. Once again, that is in the middle, that is at the peak. <clears throat> Key idea that we will utilize numerous times as we go through these problems. I gave you a little pretest yesterday, gave you a z-table. We'll work on that z-table. Hopefully, we'll get to it today. A key idea is you're going to be symmetric about the mean. Okay, now we go back to our art class. What do we mean by symmetric? Same. Same what? Same on both sides. You have a mirror image. You have a mirror image on both sides. But you see on one side, you'll see on the other.
The, gir the curve is continuous. You have no breaks in the graph. It is a smooth curve. It is continuous. Once again, you're going to have to give me a couple of these characteristics. A lot of people will choose the idea of symmetric because it's short. It's easy to remember. And a bell-shaped curve. The curve never touches the x-axis, the horizontal axis, which means it's asymptotic. Okay, an asymptote you get closer to, it's a line that you get closer to but never cross. The area between the graph and the x-axis is equal to 1 for 100%. And the last one I gave you most of it there is the empirical rule, what we already talked about. The area between the graph and the x-axis between the values are one that are one standard deviation away from the mean is 0.68. Two standard deviations away from the mean is 0.95. Three standard deviations is 0.997. That is the empirical rule that we talked about in chapter number two, or chapter one. So if we take a look at the mean, which is right in the middle, why do you do that? Here's your mean. And if we take a look at one standard deviation away from the mean, here's our x bar. This is x bar plus the standard deviation. This is x bar minus the standard deviation. What this means right here is if I calculate this area, this area right there, this area is equal to 0.68. One standard deviation either side from the mean. Uh, calculate this area. This area is 0.68. If I would go two standard deviations, This area right here, that area there would be 0.95. Now if I do three standard deviations, that's 0.99. When we standardize, when we throw the word standard in there, 
This will be also another topic or question on the quiz that we have over this chapter. Standard normal distribution. The normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now, when we standardize a value, when we standardize a set of data, we change all of our data to a z-score. Now, z-score is something we didn't do, we haven't done since the second chapter. <coughs> How we calculate a z-score is we take our value, we subtract off the mean, we divide by the standard deviation. Value minus mean divided by standard deviation. And this standardizes our z-score. Which is value minus mean divided by standard deviation. What we get into tomorrow. We're running out of time here. We'll get out those Z tables. We'll start utilizing our Z tables. <coughs> and we'll start dealing with some calculations. We'll use our Z tables. <coughs> uh, we'll draw these bell shaped curves. And we'll start calculating probabilities uh, and calculating areas by looking at the Z tables. So make sure. Tomorrow you bring that Z-table with you, okay? That's something that we will constantly be using throughout this entire chapter. Questions you have? All right, eyes done. Have a good day. I'm <laughs> <laughs>